Hi, I'm Luirin, and this is my Stencil Resource Packs tutorial series, where I'll explain and showcase the resource packs I have developed for use in your stencil games. This first part will cover Luirin's miscellaneous stencil behaviors. Before we begin, let's get everybody up to speed. Stencil is a 2D game creation software. It has a visual drag and drop approach to building your game's logic, using a block snapping interface while also allowing you to write your own code. You can organize reusable pieces of code into behaviors, which can be uniquely customized for different actors or scenes. This simple yet powerful framework allows you to create 2D games of any genre. Stencil can target games for iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, Linux, Flash, and HTML5. Luirin's Miscellaneous Stencil Behaviors is a resource pack containing standalone, general purpose behaviors that include special effects, platformer control, actor saving, and scene effects. You can get this pack for free in my each.io page, and it's also included in my cutscenes resource pack, where they are integrated into the scripting system. This is version 2 of the resource pack, released at the same time this video is uploaded, with new features, bug fixes, and compatibility updates for future resource packs. You can still follow along with this tutorial if you're using an older version, but always read the description of the attributes to know how to configure the behavior for your version of the pack. Links to get them will be in the description below. To import the resource pack, open your game project and go to File Import Resource. Here you can see the files you get when you extract the downloaded raw file from the each.io page. This is the documentation that explains each behavior. And this is the resource pack proper, which we'll select to import. You get a total of 9 actor behaviors and 7 scene behaviors. In this video, I'll go into a detailed explanation of how to customize each behavior their effects, as well as a few suggestions you can try on your own. All information here can be seen in the documentation file and in the description of each behavior and their attributes. With introductions out of the way, let's get started. Actor Aura This behavior creates copies of this actor's image that you can place in front of or behind it. You can customize multiple hours, which can be used simultaneously and use a custom block to activate and deactivate specific aura presets. For this actor to be created displaying auras, the activate boolean must be set to true. Then you must specify which aura indexes you want to display by configuring active auras. Just type in the index number separated by spaces. The aura themselves are configured in a list, where each index contains all the settings for one aura, separated by slashes. Aura index is then the number of their position on this list. Each of the settings have the same names of the attributes from older versions of this behavior, so you can use those as reference and follow along if you have an older version. Remember to always refer to the description of the attributes when configuring behaviors. You have the following parameters to configure. Paint style is the way you paint the after image. Fill will paint the entire after image with a single color. Tint applies the tint effect with the given color. You set the opacity of this tint effect here by adding a comma and the opacity value. Our red, green, and blue values determine the color of the aura. You can leave those as zero if not tint in your aura. Blend mode determines the blend mode used for the drawing. The available options are Add, Multiply, Screen, and Normal. Our Minimum and Max scale resize the aura every visual frame between these scales. This value is a percentage, 100 being the regular size of the actor. Our Opacity is the opacity of the aura. Our Position determines if the aura is drawn above or below the actor. Its values are Back or Front. Our X and Y origins are used to determine the starting point of the aura's drawing. Basically, the image side will match the given actor's side. You can use center, left, and right for X origin, and center, top, and bottom for Y origin. 
and as you can see, multipower effects can be used at once. Lastly, you can configure presets of auras in the Aura Presets map attribute. You can set a key to a name you can easily reference later, and use its values with the indexes of each aura of that preset, separated by spaces. To use the custom block, set the Aura Preset name to the name you used as the key in the Aura Presets map. Setting that preset to true in the custom block activates it, while setting it to false deactivates it. You don't need to set activate nor deactive auras attributes when using the custom block. For its triggers, it has activate aura and deactivate aura to quickly start or stop drawing the aura, and clear auras, which removes all active auras. If you only have one aura for your actor and want to show it at a specific moment in your game, you can customize it in the auras list, set its active indexes in the active auras, and leave activate unchecked. You can then use the triggers to call the auras when needed. This setup with the activate boolean, active indexes and presets is used for the after image and particles behaviors as well. Actor parallax. This enables parallax scrolling for individual actors. You can set the scroll to move with the camera or in the opposite direction. This actor must not be affected by gravity to work properly. Here you configure the X and Y parallax rates individually, which is the number of pixels this actor will move from its origin point. The origin point is automatically set as this actor center when it's created. Positive numbers are for the foreground elements, and negative for background. After image. This behavior draws after images as your actor moves. You can configure multiple after image settings and draw a selection of active ones. You can also create presets of after images and call them with the provided custom block. It is configured the same way as the actor aura behavior, so let's just go over the parameters. Sprite priority determines if the actor sprite will be drawn above or below the after images. You can set to true or false. Cooldown is the number of visual frames before this after image can be used again. Other after images can be drawn during this cooldown. As it uses visual frames, one second would have a value of 60 at 60 frames per second. Leave it as zero if you are only using one after image setting. Initial opacity is the opacity of the after image when it is created. Image fade time is the number of visual frames required to completely fade out the after image. Time between after images is the time in visual frames between each after image drawing. Blend mode determines the blend mode used for the after images. The available options are add, multiply, screen, or normal. Paint style is the way you paint the after image, with the same options as in the actor aura behavior, tint or fill. After image red, green, and blue values determine the color used in the paint style for the after image. One important thing to note is that only one of these after image settings is used per drawing. This makes this list a priority list. After images higher on the list will have priority over the others. Lower priority after images will only be used during the cooldown of the ones above it. If you want to create an effect in which every after image setting is used in succession, you have to carefully plan your cooldown and time between images values. Set the cooldown of the highest priority to its time between image values multiplied by the number of after images. Set the cooldown of each subsequent after image to the previous cooldown minus the time between images values. Set the cooldown of the lowest priority after image to zero. The available triggers are Start After Image and Stop After Image to quickly start and stop drawing them, and Clear After Images to remove all active After Image indexes as well as clearing them from the screen. Like in the Actor Aura behavior, you can have the After Image settings and Active After Images configured and just call the Start After Image trigger to activate it. Color Swap This behavior swaps multiple colors for your actor's sprite. 
you can create a color mode with all the colors you wish to swap and use that to quickly change colors in game using the provided custom block. The colors are configured in a map attribute. Set the map key to the name of the color mode and its values to the red, green and blue values of a color to swap, followed by the new red, green and blue color values, all separated by commas. Afterwards, add a slash and repeat to swap another color. You can set a color mode to remove all color swaps by setting the value to the word remove between square brackets. The colors will be swapped in the order you configure them. Although all color swaps start from the actor's base image, note that any new colors can be swapped later during a single color mode change, with unintended effects, so plan your color order appropriately. In this example, I want to swap blue with yellow and the white with the blue from the original image to match the actor on the right side. I set my color mode to swap the white first, then the blue, you'll get this. That is because after the white was swapped, the behavior will consider that new image to swap colors in, instead of the original actor's image. To get the desired effect, I must replace the blue first, then the white. For custom blocks, you have Swap color mode Set the color mode for the given actor and swap its colors. Effect color swap Applies an actor effect to the color swapped image. If the actor is not using a color swap, the effect will be applied to the actor directly. Opacity color swap Sets the opacity for the color swapped image over time. If the actor is not using a color swap, the opacity will be set for the actor directly. The last two blocks are needed because effects and opacity changes on the actor won't affect the color swap image. The available triggers are remove effects to remove all the applied effects both on the color swap image and on this actor and reset opacity. Reset the opacity to 100 for both the color swapped image and this actor. Die over time. This behavior sets the time for an actor to be killed after it was created. It has the following options. Stopping the actor's movement when the time is up. Set the time in seconds this actor will stay alive. Set if this actor starts fading out as soon as it's created or if it fades out after the time is up. Set an animation to play when the time is up and the duration of that animation before killing the actor. Triggers to call custom events for this actor after the time is up. More importantly, you can have all these settings assigned to specific animations for this actor, so that if you switch its animation immediately after creating it, different settings can be used. That is what the time by animation attribute is for. This can be used to have various particle graphics contained within a single actor type, for example. When used this way, it is recommended that all animations have the same size as your biggest animation for that actor type. Having different animation sizes will alter the position of your actors when created. Light source. This behavior allows your actor to act as a light source, which are masks or holes in the effect of the tint screen behavior. You select either another actor type to be used as a light image or an image from file in the extras folder. Most attributes are self-explanatory, but a few are worth a special mention. Blend mode is the blend mode used for the light source. It is recommended that you use either clear or screen. Tint index determines the tint screen effect index this light source will clear. Just as you can have multiple tint effects active at once, you can have light sources that clear specific indexes. By setting this to a dash, this light source will clear all indexes. Tint indexes will be explained later. Fade mode determines how the light source is created and erased. Fade in means the light source grows from nothing to its target size when created. And fade out means it shrinks back to nothing when erased. The image grows and shrinks from its center. Auto erase time determines if the light source will be erased after a time has passed since its creation. Set it to zero to disable this option. Light sources is a way to configure multiple light sources for this actor. Each item on the list creates a new actor 
which should have the light source behavior as well, and sets all its two attributes with the parameters from this list. The available triggers are create light and erase light to create and erase this actor's light source respectively. Particles. This behavior turns your actor into a particle emitter. It is configured just like the other special effects behaviors, with lists, active indexes, and presets. This behavior has been greatly changed in this update of the resource pack, so several features might not be available if you are using an older version. Here, particles are just actors. You need to assign it to an actor group for its collision, decide if it's affected by gravity, and if it can rotate. They must be cleared from the game after a time, and that's what the die over time behavior is used for. The particles list contains a set of particles in each index. Each of its parameters are separated by slashes. Actor type, animation, and layer ID are the actor type to create, the animation to set it to, and the layer ID to draw it to, all separated by commas. You can set layer ID to self to draw to this actor's layer. You can have multiple actor types here by adding a semicolon and repeating the parameters. One of them will randomly be selected whenever a particle is spawned for this index. Interval is the minimum and maximum times in seconds between each particle spawn in this index. Amount is the minimum and maximum number of particles this index can spawn per cycle, followed by the total amount of particles this index can create. After the total amount is created, the index is deactivated. To have unlimited particles, use zero as the total amount. Spawn type and position determine the way you spawn the particles around your actor. In random, you set the minimum and maximum offsets from these actors' x and y positions. The particles will be created randomly in that area. In perimeter, you set the offsets from this actor's position to be the center of a circle, its radius, and the angles available to create particles in. Particles will be created between those angles of the circumference. Remember that angles start with zero pointing to the right, and you can use angles above 360 if needed. Movement mode and movement data determine how the particles will be moved when spawned. You can push them towards a range of angles, push away or towards the actor's center or point from the actor. You can elect to not move the particles. Particle force, the force used to push particles when they are created. The random number between the minimum and maximum forces is used. Particle turning speed is the speed to spin your particles when they are created. The random number between the maximum and minimum speeds is used. Set interval to zero and set an unlimited amount of particles, they will be created with an interval of 0.01 seconds between them. If you set interval to zero and total amount to a number greater than zero, all those particles will be created instantly. Custom blocks include set particle preset, which activates or deactivates a particle preset, and set particle index to activate or deactivate specific indexes. The available triggers are start emitting, stop emitting, and clear particles, and they are used just like in the actor aura and after image behaviors. Player control. This is a general purpose platform movement behavior. It includes ground detection, horizontal movement, facing, running, jumping, slope detection, semi-solid platforms, animations, and camera follow. Running is performed by holding a key. The player can drop down from semi-solid platforms with a held plus key press combination. The camera can constantly follow the actor or snap to a grid of screen-sized areas. Movement can be instant or momentum-based by configuring the acceleration attribute. To create semi-solid platforms, create an actor with a sensor collision, not affected by gravity, and assign it to the same actor group you set in the sensors platform group attribute. It doesn't need any behavior or code in it though it is limited to a flat ground. A few recommendations. Make their size the same as your tile size. 
make the intended top of your platform's graphic one pixel below the top of the collision. Here you can see that pixel gap. That is because the actor needs to be inside the platform to recognize its sensor collision. Lastly, you can hold shift when placing your platforms on the scene designer. Because of that pixel gap in the graphics, you can move your platforms one pixel up by pressing the up direction on your keyboard to compensate for that. This will align your platforms with your regular tiles and hopefully make your actor transition between them more smoothly. The actor's facing is handled by an actor value. Its default name is facing, though you can change it if that name is already used. The value itself will be set to left or right. Whenever you need to retrieve the actor's facing, just use the actor values block. You can specify different slowdowns when the actor stops moving both on ground and mid-air. A value of 1 means no slowdown and a value of 0 is instant stop. Jump buffer time is the time in seconds the player can buffer a jump input. This makes it easier to perform consecutive jumps. Coyote time is the time in seconds this actor can perform a jump after it starts falling from the ground. This makes it easier to jump off of ledges. The values to block animations list might be something you need to configure quite a bit, depending on your game. This holds values, either attribute or actor values, that will prevent this behavior from setting this actor's animations, if the value matches its target. This can be used to have an attack behavior switch animations without interference, or if you need to switch animations as part of a cutscene, for example. All the actions you can perform with this behavior are contained in custom events, which means you can call them with triggers to have your actors perform them without player input. This behavior has the following triggers. Give control and remove control change if the player can control this actor with key presses or not. Enable camera and disable camera change if the camera is following this actor or not. Run and stop run toggles running for this actor. Walk right, walk left, stop, jump, stop jump, do exactly what their name suggests. Drop down is used to make the actor drop down from semi solid platforms. Save status. This is a quick way to store actor attributes and values and load them whenever the actor is created. This is used to preserve values between scene transitions for your player actors. Here you can see that. As the scene reloads, the state of the aura, after image, and particles for this actor is maintained. The save status global value name attribute is the name of a global value of type map that will store the information for all actors using this behavior, meaning you can leave it in its default value for all actors. A global value is the same as a dynamic game attribute, retaining their values between scenes. But unlike game attributes, you don't have to create them under settings attributes. The save key attribute should have different names for different actors. In case you have one actor that is a transformation of another, for example, you can use the same key for both of them. The values to save map contains all attributes and actor values you want to save for this actor, and it can also save the actor's layer and speed. The default values already cover layer, speed, and all the attributes for the behaviors in this pack. If you're using the cutscenes resource pack, the relevant attributes for that pack are included as well. You add values to this map if your own code has attributes or actor values you want to preserve between scenes, for example, the actor's current health or a number that determines the time left for a special effect to end. You can set save key to scene between square brackets and that will save the instance of an actor placed in the scene designer. In previous versions of this pack, there was a behavior called save scene actor state, but it is now merged into the save status behavior thanks to this option. If you do that, you can add a key with position between square brackets as its value, which will save the actor's position on the scene. This means that if the actor moves and you leave and re-enter the scene, 
it will load in the position you left it in. You have custom blocks to both set and retrieve saved values, using the save key to retrieve the data of specific actors. The available triggers are save, save the actor's information in the global value. This is automatically called during scene transitions. Load, loads all the information into the actor, and it is automatically called when the actor is created. Clear self, removes the saved data from this actor. Store data, stores all the actor's information without saving. Save stored data, saves the stored information into the global value. Resize scene menu windows. These behaviors allows you to resize images using the 9 slice method. The corners are preserved, while the rest of the image is resized. You need to attach this behavior to the scene whenever you want to use this behavior's custom block. To work properly, your base image should have dimensions in multiples of 3. In this pack, only the time count behavior uses this as one of the timer background options. For the cutscene resource pack, the set controls behaviors may also require this. Save actors. This scene behavior saves actors created at runtime to this scene. This means that whenever you return to the scene, all saved actors will be recreated and loaded with the specified attributes and values from the save status behavior if they have the seed save boolean checked. Its position is automatically saved as well. The save scene global value name works just like the save status global value name attribute in the save status behavior. It's a global value of type map that stores the saved data for all scenes, so you can use the default value. As for a practical example, in most 3D Legend of Zelda games, you get a hard container when you defeat a boss, but you can ignore it and leave the dungeon. If you later return to the boss room, the hard container will still be there. That is the main use case for this behavior. The triggers are load actors, which loads all saved actors into the scene, and clear scene, which clears all the saved data for this scene. Both are automatically called when this scene is loaded. Scene soundtrack. This behavior loops music for this scene as soon as it is loaded. The selected soundtrack is saved, so the loop will continue if you switch to a scene with the same soundtrack. The loop is replaced if you enter a scene with a different soundtrack value. You can also set it to stop playing any soundtrack by setting the soundtrack attribute to No Sound. The soundtrack global value name attribute holds the name of the global value that keeps track of the currently playing soundtrack. Use the same value for all scenes, and you can use the default value. Sound channel contains the sound channels used to play the soundtrack and to crossfade into a new soundtrack, separated by a comma. Use the same values for all scenes. Sound fadeout time is used to fade out the music when you enter a scene with a different soundtrack, or when you call the fade music trigger. Sound fading time contains the time after the scene is loaded to start fading in the new music, and the duration of said fade in, separated by a comma. If the time to start is smaller than the fade out time, your soundtrack will cross fade into each other. There might be instances in your game in which you want a scene to have a different soundtrack depending on certain conditions. That's what the conditional soundtrack list is used for. If the number of conditions is bad, a different soundtrack will be used. 
It is a priority list, so items higher on it have priority over the others. You configure each item with the following parameters, separated by vertical bars. Soundtrack name. It's the name of the sound in your game used for this soundtrack. Number of conditions. It's the number of required conditions to meet to play the given soundtrack. You can have more conditions than this number, essentially making an OR check for this soundtrack. Conditions. These are the conditions to play this soundtrack. You can check for scene attributes or global values. They have their own set of parameters, separated by commas. They are Value name. It's either the name of the global value or the internal name of the attribute. Origin. It's the name of the behavior to retrieve an attribute from or global value between square brackets to check for a global value. Index. Set it to list colon index to retrieve an index from a list or map colon key to retrieve a value from a map. Set it to a dash if retrieving text, number or booleans. Comparison. It's either greater, smaller, equal or different. Value. This is the target value you are comparing against. You can add a slash and repeat for multiple conditions. In this example, if the key easy race of the global value map called race is equal null, no soundtrack will be played. Any global value without a value set for it will be null. In the second example, if the current stage of day attribute from the day and night cycle behavior is equal morning or daytime, the soundtrack day theme will play. You can see here that you have two conditions, but the number of required conditions is only one. If you want to change the soundtrack after the scene was loaded, you can use the trigger Reset Soundtrack. This will automatically fade out the current soundtrack, check for conditions and play the new soundtrack. You also have the Fade Music trigger, which will fade out the current soundtrack. Slide Camera. This behavior provides a custom block that slides the camera to a given position over time. You can also configure several auto-scroll modes for this scene to make the camera automatically move around and use a custom block to quickly switch between auto-scroll modes. For both to work, remove camera control from the player control behavior, either by setting the camera control boolean to false or calling the disable camera trigger. When using the slide camera custom block, you select the position on screen to move the camera center to and the twin mode used for that camera movement. The twin modes have the same name as the modes in the change number block under attributes functions. The auto scroll modes work in the same way as the color swap behavior. You configure the sequence of points in a map attribute and each key is used to call that specific auto scroll mode using the custom block. You can also set an initial auto scroll mode to start the scene following that sequence of points. For each point in the auto scroll sequence, you have the following parameters separated by commas. X and Y positions are the positions the center of the camera will move towards. Twin option is the twin used to move the camera, the same used for the slide camera custom block. Slide time is the time in seconds it takes to finish the movement. Wait time is the time in seconds the camera will stay at a given point before moving to the next. Add a vertical bar and repeat for more points. You can set the last point to loop which will reset the auto scroll when it ends. The available triggers are stop slide, stops a camera slide, pause auto scroll, pauses the auto scroll along with the camera slide, resume auto scroll, resumes the auto scroll, it will restart the auto scroll from the point you paused it in. Switch backgrounds. This behavior changes layer opacity when the camera is within specified areas. This is used to create background changes when the camera moves from an outside area to an indoors area in the same scene, for example. 
It is recommended to have a layer of tiles covering the background in transition areas, where a background switch happens, when switching backgrounds instantly. Note that all layers must be created in the scene designer for your scenes, since this behavior only changes layer opacity. You configure each background switch in the backgrounds list. Each index contains the camera coordinates area to trigger a background switch and the affected layers, separated by a vertical bar. For the camera coordinates, you set the minimum and maximum X and Y values of the camera center, separated by commas. For the layers, you set the layer ID, opacity to set, and time in seconds to reach that opacity, separated by commas. Add a slash and repeat for more layers. If you check the debug boolean, you can see drawings for each of the areas to trigger background switches. Time count. This behavior handles multiple timers, which can count up or down with minutes, seconds, and two decimal points. You have options to draw the timers on screen, a variety of saving options, and ways to keep the timers between scenes. Your timers can start stopped or not. This setting affects all configured timers for this scene. This stop state can be saved in a global value, so it is kept between scenes. If you only want individual timers for your scenes, leave this attribute blank. Save global value is the name of a global value of time map that will store all the saved timers. Each timer is saved using its timer ID as a key. You can use the same name for all scenes. Active timers determines which timers are currently active, counting up or down. Instead of indexes, here you use the timer ID, which is an identifier given to each timer. You can also determine a global value to hold which timers are active, and this is used to preserve that state when moving between scenes. This is similar to the active indexes concept of the actor aura, after image, and particles behaviors. The format is global value name, a colon, and the list of timer IDs separated by spaces. If you don't want to save these active timers, set the space of the global value name to null between square brackets. If you only want individual timers for each stage in your game, remember to always do this for your scenes. The timer settings attribute is where the timers for this scene are configured. You will configure each one with the following parameters, separated by slashes. Initial time is the time to start with. Time up or time down determines if this timer counts up or down. Timer ID is the identifier for this specific timer. It cannot contain spaces in its name. This is used whenever you want to retrieve a timer, saved or ongoing. Replace option determines when the timer can be saved. Always replace makes this timer always available for saving. Replace bigger saves if the current timer is bigger than the saved value, and replace smaller saves if the current timer is smaller than the saved value. Autosave determines if this timer is automatically saved or not. Set this to a dash if you don't want to save it. This is useful if you want a timer that persists through scene transitions, or a survival timer. Load determines if this timer loads a saved value at the beginning of a scene or not. Set it to a dash if you don't want to load it. This is useful to maintain the timer between scene transitions. Draw mode determines when this timer can be drawn on screen. Always means the timer can be drawn regardless of its active state. Active only draws if the timer is active, and hide won't draw the timer. Hide can be used to have a constantly running game timer, which you don't want to display on screen. Remember that you always need the draw timer boolean set to true to draw timers on screen. Minute second separation is the text that separates the minutes and seconds on the display, and second decimal separation is the text that separates the seconds and decimals on the display. Let's go over a few examples. This is a time attack style timer. 
that counts up from zero requires the save time or save active time triggers to save the time, and it's only saved if it is smaller than the saved value. It's always drawn on screen. If you're using this style of timer for multiple levels in your game, just change the timer ID for each scene. This is also a time attack style timer, but it works across multiple scenes, thanks to the load option. It constantly saves, and it isn't run on screen. Can be used as a total gameplay timer. Since this timer is set to always replace, you must store the final value in a separate game attribute. This is a countdown timer, starting from 2 minutes, that is constantly saved. It works across multiple scenes thanks to the load option. It will only be drawn if it is active. To draw the timers on screen, you customize the available positions on screen through the timer positions attribute. To determine if the position starts from the left or right sides of the screen, and from the top or bottom of the screen. It also sets the position and animation used for the timer background. Note that the position of the background is set as an offset from the timer's position. The timers will be drawn in the order they are configured. You can draw as many timers as there are available positions. As you can have hidden timers, or timers that only draw when active, they will use the position in order, and your timers can move around because of that. There are also two more requirements to draw a timer on screen. First, the draw timer boolean must be set to true. You can set a global value to store the drawing state across scenes. Second, font to use must have a value. Using Stencil's default font won't work. And lastly, you have a few background options for your timers. Now that you have your timer set up, how do you interact with them? There are two main ways. One is to retrieve an ongoing timer. This is done by retrieving the timers map attribute from this behavior. It is a map attribute, and you use the timer ID you set for your timers as key. Two is to retrieve a saved timer. You do this by retrieving the global value used for saving timers. It is a map as well, and you use the timer ID you set for your timers as keys. The values are stored in seconds. To give them the proper formatting, use the format number custom block. Besides the aforementioned custom block, you also have the set timer state to set individual timer IDs to active or not. And modify timer ID to add or subtract a number from a timer on this scene. If you set the modifier to reset, you will reset that specific timer to its initial value. The available triggers are Continue Timer and Interrupt Timer, Resume and Stop all timers respectively, Start Drawing Timer and Stop Drawing Timer, Start and Stop Drawing for all timers respectively, Save Time, Save all timers. Save active time. Save only the currently active timers on this scene. Reset time. Set all timers on this scene to their initial values. Tint screen. This behavior tints the screen with a specified color and blend mode. You can have multiple tint effects at once, which can affect all layers or specific ones. Each tint effect is identified by their index, either on the tint layers list for the scene's initial tint, or for tints using the custom block. When you use the light source behavior, you create areas on the screen that are not affected by the tint effect. You can select tint indexes to be unpausable, meaning while the tint effect is being applied, pausing the game will not interrupt them. This applies to all tint indexes, including those you set up using the custom blocks. Configuring the tint layers list is only used for effects applied when the scene is loaded. 
We configure each effect with the following parameters separated by commas. Color values. The red, green and blue values for the color to tint the screen. Opacity is the opacity of the tint effect. Layer ID. The layer to apply the tint effect. Set it to screen to affect all layers. Blend mode. Name of the blend mode used. The available modes are Add, Alpha, Darken, Difference, Erase, Hard Light, Invert, Lighten, Multiply, Normal, Overlay, Screen, and Subtract. Fade time. Time in seconds for this tint effect to reach the desired opacity. The provided custom block doesn't require any preset or to be configured in a list to work. You select all your tint effect settings on the block itself and use it as is. You must set an index for it to be able to reference that tint effect later. You can also use a custom block to remove specific tint effects, again identified by their indexes. Remember that this behavior must be attached to this scene for the custom blocks to work. That about covers everything for this resource pack. Once again, links to get it and my other stencil resources will be in the description below. You can leave your questions in the comment section, on the Stencil forums or on the Stencil Discord server. You can also reach me on Twitter, where I post updates about my ongoing projects. I have more tutorials and Stencil resources coming up, so look forward to those. Thanks for watching.